In this video, we're going to cover everything that you need to know about Polygon 2.0. We'll first cover all of the history of Polygon and how it's evolved over time to reach where we are today in this vision of Polygon 2.0. We'll then dive into the specific details of the 2.0 roadmap, covering all things including Polygon Proof of Stake, Polygon ZK EVM, Polygon Maiden, Polygon CDK, and later on, we'll even dive super deep into the technical details of things like Type 1 and Type 2 Provers, as well as innovations in the zero knowledge proof space of things like Plonky 3 and how those fit into the 2.0 roadmap as well. By the end of the video, you'll have an in-depth understanding of each of Polygon's different products, how they all fit together, and what this means for the future of Polygon as part of this 2.0 roadmap. So without further ado, let's dive right into the details of where Polygon started and how Polygon has evolved over time to reach where we're at today. So for those of you who don't know, Polygon was formerly known as Matic and was a company created in late 2017 to launch a blockchain that eventually launched in mid 2020, which was kind of addressing the scalability issues that already existed on Ethereum. The way it worked was using this technology called Plasma to take load off of Ethereum on what is typically called a side chain or a commit chain known as the Matic or later rebranded to the Polygon proof of stake chain that we know and love today. Today, you can see this hosts nearly 3 million average daily transactions and has over $5 billion worth of secured assets on this one proof of stake chain. The reason this blew up so quickly was because it was way easier for developers and users alike to use the Matic network or the Polygon proof of stake network because it offered substantially lower fees and faster speeds for experiences that were coming out in kind of the boom of Web3 like NFTs, for example. Plasma is really just a technology that was built to address the scalability issues that Ethereum faces, right? Because people on Ethereum were paying hundreds, if not thousands of dollars during the massive NFT craze to mint and transfer NFTs, which is kind of absurd looking back when there were alternatives being built like Polygon that were, you know, a couple of cents to do the exact same transactions over on this separate chain. We saw these new innovations like optimistic rollups, ZK rollups, Validiums, and over time, the community kind of kept coming out with these new and improved innovations to address these scalability problems that Ethereum was and is still having today. The reason these are being built on Ethereum is because Ethereum has a strong foundation for decentralization and security. It just lacks scalability that these issues are kind of being addressed by, by these new innovations to kind of hit that trifecta of scalability, decentralization, and security within one chain. So rather than constantly having to come out with a new thing or change the chain to meet the community's expectations of whatever the latest and greatest innovations are to scale Ethereum, the decision was made to heavily invest and kind of go all in on a single technology that is able to power all of these different scalability solutions and that technology is zero knowledge proofs. So that gives you a brief history of where Polygon has come from and where it's going today. Essentially, zero knowledge proofs are going to be utilized to power various different kinds of scalability solutions in a way to attack this from multiple angles, multiple different innovative technologies, but at the same time, having these experiences and these technologies connected together so that it's seamless for the user to use any of the technologies that applications choose to build on. So that kind of leads us to part two of the story where Polygon says, hey, we really like the potential that these zero knowledge proofs can have, especially in scaling Ethereum. How can we invest and start building and attacking the scalability issues that Ethereum has from multiple angles, all powered by zero knowledge proofs? What this kicked off was two major acquisitions that the Polygon team made. And the first of which was the Hermes team, which was a ZK rollup. And this was acquired for apparently $250 million in an acquisition to say, hey, Hermes team, come and build in-house in the Polygon team, help us attack the scalability issues that Ethereum is facing by coming out with this zero knowledge roll-up scalability solution to address these issues. The second of which was Mir 
Mirror, I hope I'm saying that correctly, protocol, which was again a team of cryptographers and engineers focused on helping scale Ethereum. And this came after the Hermes acquisition, which was apparently again a $400 million deal, according to these articles. A super important part of this was the talent that came along with these teams. And hopefully you see some familiar faces here like Jordi and David, all of these insanely talented kind of giga brains that came from these teams, including all of the engineers from the Mirror Protocol as well, like Brandon and Daniel, and all of these very talented engineers coming over to Polygon to say, hey, how can we actually address the scalability issues that Ethereum is having by building technologies powered by zero knowledge proofs. Around the same time in late 2021, Polygon also announced Polygon Maiden, which was a, another solution, again, attempting to solve this scalability issue of Ethereum from yet again, another different angle. So we kind of have these three separate channels at this point in time come together within Polygon to work together to create various different products that address scalability of Ethereum. And the culmination of all of this is Polygon 2.0, which was the announcement made in June of 2023 that really is saying, hey, here's all of the products and all of the work that we've been doing behind the scenes. Here's all of the different products and solutions that we've put out to help the Ethereum scalability issues. Polygon 2.0 and the vision of Polygon 2.0 is about how all of these products come together and kind of connect to be able to provide a seamless experience for users. So we know Polygon 2.0 is about all of these ZK proof powered technologies coming together to work together in one kind of joined ecosystem. But how does that actually work? What is the plan to release these products? How do they work together? Where do the products fit in? And what technologies and innovations are vital to really make this thing work? That's what we're going to walk through next. We're going to go through each of the pieces of the puzzle that make up Polygon's ecosystem of products and the broader Polygon 2.0 vision. And we'll hopefully piece together this into one kind of image that you can make in a mental model that you have of what all of these announcements and what Polygon 2.0 really means overall. The first product we're going to talk about is Polygon ZK EVM. ZK EVM went into mainnet in early 2023 on March 27th, and the ZK EVM represents an EVM compatible zero knowledge rollup. So it's batching transactions together and utilizing zero knowledge proofs to prove the validity of those batches of transactions. The reason I'm talking about this first was because this was really the first production ready zero knowledge proof technology that we saw come out of Polygon. And the way it works is essentially it runs a rollup as a layer two chain. So it uses a bridge funds from layer one to layer two. The transactions get submitted to layer two from users. The layer two executes them. And then in the background performs three steps. So it batches transactions together. It then sends all of those batches to layer one Ethereum, which is really just a smart contract living on Ethereum. And then the final step is to generate a zero knowledge proof and verify that proof on Ethereum. So that verification process existing on Ethereum and being executed in the Ethereum environment actually allows the Polygon ZK EVM to inherit the security and the in and the decentralization of the Ethereum blockchain while scaling up the scalability orders of magnitude. And I have a full video about this on my channel. It's called the Ultimate Developer's Guide to Polygon ZK EVM. If you want to go more into depth than I will in this video about how ZK EVM works. So here's where we are today. Polygon currently runs two blockchains in production, one of which is the original Matic network rebranded to the Polygon proof of stake or POS chain, which as we kind of discussed earlier is commonly called a side chain. More accurately, we can call it a commit chain as it does post these checkpoints back to Ethereum. However, it's a separate kind of layer one to what Ethereum is. It does have a two-way connection between Polygon POS and Ethereum, but it used to run a completely separate consensus mechanism. It has its own set of validators and reaches these kind of separate uh, blocks than what Ethereum is running, right? It's kind of two separate uh, ecosystems, almost with a bridge in between to go back and forth. So it is connected, but really you can think of them as two separate chains. 
Where Polygon's EVM differs is it lives in layer two, which is kind of above Ethereum and posts everything back down to Ethereum, including transaction data. So the difference here is Polygon ZK EVM is a roll up, whereas Polygon Proof of Stake chain is a commit chain or a side chain, if you prefer to use that a more well known term. So Polygon ZK EVM posts all transaction data of all the transactions that occurred on the layer two or the roll up, as well as these zero knowledge proofs that prove the validity of those batches. The thing about this state is Polygon Proof of Stake chain is arguably just technologically worse than Polygon ZK EVM. However, it has huge benefits like a massive ecosystem. And if you build on the proof of stake chain, you can get in the same environment as the top brands in the industry. So you get access to the same block space and the same ecosystem, the same community where Nike exists, where Starbucks exists, where Reddit NFTs exists, all of these massive brands and huge value locked, huge transactions per day are all occurring on this proof of stake chain. But then the EVM comes along and it says, hey, we're arguably more secure than what proof of stake is doing. Since we're sending everything back in this roll up like fashion where transaction data gets back and we're using this new awesome technology of zero knowledge proofs. So you can imagine Polygon kind of saying, well, our developers are split between proof of stake and ZK EVM where you would only really choose proof of stake to access the existing community, which, which is a big factor, don't get me wrong, but Polygon says, well, we need to make some upgrades to proof of stake, which is what we're gonna talk about next as POS becomes a ZK POS. But before we do that, let's talk more about ZK EVM. And I talk about this in more depth in my developer's guide to ZK EVM video, but the EVM compatibility added to zero knowledge rollups or Ethereum virtual machine compatibility added to zero knowledge rollups was huge because it meant you could tap into all of the existing Ethereum community, which was something that was not previously possible and was a huge sacrifice that zero knowledge rollups had to make in the past, right? Where you had to expect the developers to learn new languages, learn new tools, and you expected users to onboard to completely new experiences and tools as well, which was a huge sacrifice that what people were making for the upside of using zero knowledge proofs to prove batches of transactions. So ZK AVM came along and said, hey, let's get the best of both worlds. We access all of the existing Ethereum community Everyone's familiar with all of the workflows from both a dev and a user perspective. And we can also use this awesome technology to prove batches of transactions and achieve that scalability with zero knowledge proofs. So then the question becomes, well, we have all of this zero knowledge tech and we've run it in production for, you know, six to eight to 12 months, depending on when you're watching the video. Why don't we use this zero knowledge tech because of its benefits of security and decentralization that get inherited from Ethereum, which is some of the uh, things the Polygon Proof of Stake chain sacrifices to some extent to achieve its current level of scalability. Why don't we upgrade it to use all of this tech that we've invested and built in-house and implement it in Polygon Proof of Stake chain. So that's what we're gonna talk about next is how the Proof of Stake chain is going to go through an upgrade to implement zero knowledge proof technology to become the ZK POS. So this was kind of the second announcement as part of Polygon 2.0, which came a week later on June 20th of 2023, was the announcement that the proof of stake chain that everyone kind of knows and loves about Polygon, which is where all the major brands are on, which is where a huge amount of transactions occur and a huge amount of value is stored in the chain, is going to go through an upgrade to become ZK EVM Validium, which is a mouthful full and we'll get to what that means in a second here but it's kind of what we talked about the whole point of this was to say well we just did all this awesome stuff with zero knowledge proofs right why don't we just upgrade our current chain that we're kind of running the pos to utilize all of this technology to kind of upgrade the level of security that this chain achieves and kind of actually move it up into that layer two environment rather than have it run as a side chain or a commit chain. So around this time I joined Polygon and I had no idea what a ZK EVM Validium was. So I wrote this article. If you're in the same boat, I'll leave a link in the description for you to check this out as well. I also have a video on my channel called 
Polygon's biggest change yet uh, around a couple of months ago, if you're interested in watching that video. Hopefully I'll put all of these in like the YouTube embeds and stuff as well. If you want to kind of dive deeper, everything will be linked in the description as well. So if you don't know what a Validium is, essentially it is very similar to the way a ZK EVM rollup works. So you get access to all of the existing Ethereum developer and user community. You experience all of the same processes and experiences that you get when interacting with Web3 applications or Web3 games. The difference between a Validium and a rollup, so the difference between what was proposed of the POS chain to become a ZK POS and the ZK EVM, which are kind of two separate chains, is the ZK EVM says, okay, we're going to take a secure approach where we're sending everything back, all of the transaction data goes back to Ethereum, right? So you can actually rebuild the entire chain just based on what is available from Ethereum. The difference between a ZK EVM rollup and a Validium here is the Validium does not send all the transaction data back. It just, as you can see here, it again uses zero knowledge proofs to guarantee the validity of batches. The difference here is that it does not send the actual transaction data back to Ethereum. It just posts the validity proof containing the verified proof of the result of transactions back. The reason for this is because sending data to Ethereum is expensive, right? The more data you send, the more often you call Ethereum and the more data you transfer across, essentially the more money you're going to pay to the Ethereum protocol in gas fees, right? So this kind of said, well, we have the ZK EVM, which inherits all the decentralization, all the security of Ethereum while getting massively improved scalability. The ZK POS, which is a ZK EVM Validium, I know this is probably kind of confusing with all these words, but it's a separate chain that does not post all the transaction data back. It still utilizes all of the investment and the building over the past couple of years in the zero knowledge proof space, but it just proves things and posts the proof back, not all of the transaction data with it. So it's comparatively less secure than the Polygon ZK EVM, but more secure than the current state of the proof of stake chain. It just kind of says, we now have this very secure, very scalable chain, which is the ZK EVM. Let's come up with comparatively less secure than the ZK EVM as transaction data is not being posted back. Let's lean more towards the scalability side where we don't pay as much to send all the transaction data back, but we still use the zero knowledge proof technology to secure the validity of these batches of transactions. This is summarized really well in this paragraph here where you can see on the left hand side, we have the ZK EVM rollup, which is Polygon ZK EVM. All of the data availability, AKA transaction data gets sent back to Ethereum along with the ZK proof. And this is fully secure and backed by Ethereum. So very strongly inherits the security properties and the decentralization properties of Ethereum by sending everything back means you can completely rebuild the chain just based on what's available on Ethereum. The other hand, on the right hand side here, we have the ZK EVM Validium, which is more scalable and more affordable because you're not paying the fee to send that massive amount of transaction data back to Ethereum. And the difference here is this data availability line, which suggests that the data availability does not go back to Ethereum, AKA transaction data does not go back to Ethereum and kind of is maintained by these data availability committees within the ZK EVM Validium protocol. If we scroll a little bit down here, you can see this kind of simply put just means the ZK EVM is more suitable for things like high value DeFi applications that require the top levels of security for blockchain applications. And then the POS chain is more suitable for probably most use cases, right? More applications care about scale and still have a strong sense of security, but are willing to make the sacrifice that data availability is maintained within that Validium environment, which may be more suitable for things like Web3 gaming or social applications. So if we modify our diagram here, according to what will be kind of the view after this upgrade occurs, Polygon POS will no longer be a side chain or a commit chain. It's going to move up into this layer two world here. And instead of posting checkpoints back, it's just going to post zero knowledge proofs. So instead of both transaction data and zero knowledge proofs, let's just put zero knowledge proofs here. 
and Ethereum is just gonna stretch over here. So we now have on layer two, two chains that coexist. We have the Polygon proof of stake chain and we have the Polygon ZK EVM chain. The proof of stake chain is just posting zero knowledge proofs, not posting transaction data. So again, this is more scalable and more kind of cost effective because you're not paying for all the transaction data to go back. But if you want the top, top, top level of security, you want to be able to rebuild the entire chain just based on what's on Ethereum on layer one, then that's where the Polygon Z AVM comes in. It provides you with that top notch level of security while still having a, a massive increase in scalability on this layer two environment compared to layer one. The difference here is that it posts both transaction data and the ZK proofs back to Ethereum. So this is the state after this Polygon proof of stake chain is upgraded to the ZK POS or a ZK EVM Validium. The thing is here, even after this upgrade occurs, developers are still faced with this kind of dilemma where you say, well, do I want to build on proof of stake and access the existing community again, where all of the top Web3 brands are building on? Or do I want to build on this kind of newer chain where I want to build a high security DeFi application, or I want that top notch security on the ZK EVM? Which one of these chains do I choose? And this is what we're going to talk about next. So the third thing I wanted to walk through after the ZK EVM and the Polygon proof of stake upgrade is the Polygon CDK or Polygon's chain development kit alongside a piece of that kind of puzzle that fits all of this together, which is the interop or interoperability layer that is gonna sit between the layer one and layer two environments here. So what we're gonna talk about next is first CDK, what the chain development kit means for this diagram we've got going on here. And then we'll show you how the interop layer is going to come and sit between the two layers that we have so far to kind of join the experience together. So in the roadmap, we just talked about at the very end there, the Polygon proof of stake to ZKL2. I'm gonna actually skip ahead of time because I think it makes more kind of chronological sense to this latest announcement. So there's two more or three more that haven't been revealed, but what we're gonna skip to is the CDK, the chain development kit, just because I think it makes more sense to put this here in the story now. So this takes us to an announcement that was made late in August of this year of 2023, which was the announcement of the Polygon CDK, which was kind of a rebrand of Supernets, which is essentially the same products, just renamed to CDK, Chain Development Kit, which allows developers and companies to come in and launch their own layer two ZK EVMs or ZK EVM Validiums in either rollup or Validium mode using the technology that Polygon has built out to power their own chains. So the idea is you kind of pick and choose each part of the stack that you want. So you pick what kind of prover you want, pick where your data availability goes. Is it in rollup mode? Is it in Validium mode? You pick and choose each aspect of the chain's design with kind of custom rules that you can configure, like what, what token you use for gas, how the governance works, all of these customizable aspects powered by the innovations that Polygon has come out with for their own zero knowledge proof powered chains. So this really solves a massive problem for developers wanting to build a chain. Creating your own chain is very difficult, right? Not that I've tried to do it myself before this, but I imagine it was very difficult to create and operate your own blockchain, not to mention the costs and kind of time investments associated with doing that, right? So you can create your own chain you can also create your own rollup, which is probably arguably even harder to run your own EVM compatible zero knowledge rollup, requires a lot of time, a lot of money, and a lot of people that are probably smarter than I am to <laughs> even run the chain, right? So this kind of solves the issue of, well, I wanna make my own chain with my own custom rules, like the way the governance works or how the native gas token works, what tokens we're using, how the chain operates, what requirements you have to have to even use the chain. This comes in and says, well, it's really difficult to make your own chain. It's probably even more difficult to make your own EVM compatible, zero knowledge powered rollup. So this is a solution where you can actually launch your own ZK powered L2 in either rollup mode or in Validium mode. So essentially, 
Do you want something like the ZK POS in Validia mode, which is more scalable and more cost efficient, but doesn't send all the transaction data down? Or do you want something in rollup mode, which is probably gonna cost you more to actually run the chain and send everything back to Ethereum, but you get that added benefit that you can rebuild the entire thing based on what information is available on layer one. So in our diagram here, we kind of add a whole new aspect. I'm just gonna move over here so we have some space and we'll make some room for the CDK chains here. So we'll say Polygon CDK chains. And again, chain development kit is CDK. It allows devs and businesses to come in and create their own kind of custom made chains with their own rules that utilize the same technology that proof of stake chain and the ZK EVM chain is going to utilize under the hood as well. So here we're just gonna make a bunch of little boxes that represent all of the CDK chains coming in and using the same ZK tech. So just make a bunch of different boxes here, copy and paste these in, you get the point, and paste these guys in here. So some of the CDK chains that have already been announced are things like Manta, things like Immutable ZK EVM, all of these different chains. I, I can't remember which ones are public and which ones are private, so I, I don't want to spill any names that I'm not supposed to. But some of the announcements that you'll see on Twitter are things like proposing Doge chain, proposing Ape chain, proposing all of these uh, communities that want their own chain and want their own block space for various different reasons to come in and utilize this kind of all-in-one solution to create your own kind of gold standard for L2s powered by zero knowledge proofs. And these are all going to come into something called the interrupt layer. So let's put this down to Ethereum now. But what I'm gonna show you next is in this roadmap here, if I can find it, we are going to talk about the interop layer, which brings us back to this third roadmap announcement here called protocol architecture. So we've gone back in time from the announcements from the CDK, and we're gonna go back to protocol architecture and this is just because I think it makes more sense to structure the kind of chronological order of what we go through this way. So this brings us to the announcement on June 29th, 2023. And this is talking about the overall architecture of the Polygon 2.0 vision. And if we scroll down here, we're gonna see a very nice diagram that talks about the interrupt layer. So in our diagram right now, we have the ZK EVM, we have the POS, ZK EVM Validium. So we have ZK EVM and the proof of stake chain. And then we have all of the CDK built chains, right? So things like Doge chain, things like Ape chain, if the proposal goes through, things like immutable ZK EVM. These are CDK chains and you can see here, it's, it's super net. So this was a previous name of CDK. These are all going through the middle kind of section here called the interop layer. And the interop layer is what sits between all of these L2s and the L1. And the reason for this is because you can kind of imagine right now, none of these chains that get built with CDK, including the ZK EVM and the POS and the ZK POS, let's quickly just add that ZK in there. None of these chains are connected with each other. So you still face the difficulty of, well, I have to go from Ethereum to my chain and then back to Ethereum to another chain. Let's say if I wanted to bridge funds from ZK POS to ZK EVM or to uh, immutable ZK EVM or to Doge chain, for example, I would have to go through ZK POS back to Ethereum, back to ZK EVM, back to Ethereum, back to a CDK chain. You get the point, right? This is a brutal process of bridging back and forth between L2 to L1, back to another L2, back to another L1, back to L2, right? Back and forth between these two layers. So what the interop layer comes in and does is it says, well, that experience for users is pretty brutal, right? So let's add something in the middle here, which is the interop layer. And interop really just stands for interoperability, which is just kind of a fancy word for connection between the various L2s that are going to exist in this top layer here. So we're gonna make this a nice pretty blue color and we're going to call this the interop in brackets, interoperability, <laughs> interoperability layer. And all of these chains are going to send their zero knowledge proofs back down to the kind of middle layer here. And what this middle layer is gonna do is post a single zero knowledge proof back to Ethereum. So all of these ZK proofs are gonna go through this middle layer and it's gonna kind of aggregate them together and say, well, here's a proof of all of the proofs that happened on all of these chains and just post that one proof back to Ethereum. 
And what we should add in this section here is depending on whether the CDK chain that gets built opts in for either rollup mode or validia mode, we can say ZK proofs get sent back here. And optionally, if rollup mode, transaction data too. Let's make this a little smaller. So you can always send zero knowledge proofs down from the CDK chains to actually prove the batches of transactions that occurred. And optionally, if you want to opt into rollup mode, you can also send all of the transaction data back to this as well. Now, the important thing that the interrupt layer offers is that you don't need to go all the way back down to Ethereum and then back up to the layer two. It allows you to kind of seamlessly swap between all of these layer twos. And I'm not gonna keep this line in the diagram here, but just so you get a, a kind of picture of what I mean by this, it allows you to say swap from a gaming CDK chain, such as a mutable ZK EVM, over to Polygon ZK EVM, over to Polygon Proof of Stake, over to Doge chain, over to whatever chain is powered by the CDK here. So it avoids having to go back to Ethereum, back to L2, back to Ethereum, back to L2, to kind of have that swap between different chains. An important thing to note here is the interrupt is not in production just yet. So this is something that's coming up at the time of this, this video, it is not currently in production to actually connect all of these chains just yet. This is something that is planned to come out uh, in the near future. So now we end up in a point where it actually doesn't really matter which chain you build on, right? You can build on proof of stake and have your users in the future seamlessly able to transfer across to ZK AVM or have an experience on the ZK AVM without having to be exposed to that kind of brutal UX of a bridging process between L1 and L2. You can kind of just maintain your life on the layer two and all of these chains on the layer two are gonna be powered by the same zero knowledge proof technology that the Polygon teams are using for the POS and the ZK EVM. A very important question here, and this is going to lead into our next kind of uh, discussion in the video here, is how do we make sure all of these chains are actually decentralized? And how do we build a system where people are incentivized to participate in these networks and get rewarded for their hard work, right? How do we ensure the decentralization and people are actually participating to make these what they're supposed to be and, and make them decentralized, right? So this is where I wanna head back to the roadmap here. And I think I may have spoiled it, but here is the next blog I wanted to talk about, which is the poll tokenomics. So again, we're gonna go back in time from the chain development kit announcement. We're gonna open up the Polygon 2.0 tokenomics section here. So this was announced on July 13th, 2023. And here you can see in this diagram, I, I really like this diagram. I think it explains it very well. You can see Paul in the middle is going to serve all of the chains like the EVM, POS, and all of the app chains that we just talked about created via the Polygon CDK. This is a one-to-one -one upgrade. Again, I have a video talking about how that one-to-one -one upgrade is going to occur within the smart contract logic on my channel if you wanna check that out. But essentially users will migrate their Matic tokens which currently only supports the proof of stake chain and validates the proof of stake chain and rewards people to make that chain uh, decentralized in a delegated proof of stake manner. Instead of it just serving one chain, we're going to make the upgrade to become poll instead of Matic. So it's gonna be a one-to-one -one mapping. You'll pass your poll, sorry, you'll pass your Matic through a smart contract and you'll get the same amount of poll in return. And poll is what's being called a hyper-productive token. Hyper-productive means you can use it to participate in multiple different chains. So you could participate in ZEVM, participate in proof of stake and participate in Doge chain or whatever CDK chains there are in kind of the same point in time. And you can also participate as multiple different roles in each of those networks at the same time as well. And it's used as a kind of incentive mechanism behind all of the different chains on all of the different roles, right? So things like, let's say I wanted to be a validator in the proof of stake network. I wanted to provide data availability. So I'll join the data availability committee in the proof of stake network. And I also want to participate in some way in the Doge chain or whatever CDK chain I want to be a part of and get rewards 
based on my participation to make these systems decentralized, that's where Poll comes in to actually be able to serve all of the chains on the layer two and not just the proof of stake chain, which is what it's doing now. And if we scroll down, there's this other amazing diagram. Whoever's making these needs a race, these are really nice. What it kind of suggests is down in the bottom here and what's being called the staking layer is where poll and the people participating in the networks can use the poll token to participate in multiple different ways and multiple different chains at once to add security to the kind of whole ecosystem that Polygon 2.0 encompasses. And if we go back in time again to the protocol architecture blog, we can scroll down a little bit to the staking layer section here, which essentially describes the staking hub, which is a place where users can participate with their poll to help add security and decentralization to all of the layer twos that exist within the Polygon ecosystem. And as you can see here, on multiple chains, you'll be able to do validation, accepting transactions and generating blocks, which is what most validators do in the current system. You'll be able to operate in zero knowledge proof generation, participate in the data availability committees, committees, that's so hard to say. I'm just gonna call it DAC from now on, DAC. And you get all these kind of different rewards available for the different roles that you participate across multiple chains at once. So it really ties together how these systems are going to maintain decentralization and security because it's going to be powering people to be incentivized to actually perform those roles in the network. Okay, so here's a good breathing point. Everything we've talked about up until this point has been about the Ethereum virtual machine or the EVM world. So proof of stake, ZK EVM, all of the ZK EVM L2s being built via the CDK, going back to Ethereum. One other thing that Polygon is building among other products such as Polygon ID, which we won't get to in this video, is Polygon Maiden. And Polygon Maiden is essentially Polygon's way of saying, well, just like in the Web2 world, not everything is going to be most suitable to the norm, right? I consider EVM the norm. What if we went a different pathway to say, let's optimize for ZK friendliness, because EVM is not designed to be ZK friendly or optimized for zero knowledge proofs it's actually quite difficult to generate zero knowledge proofs that work within the EVM. So Maiden is a non EVM compatible kind of zero knowledge virtual machine. So it's actually called Maiden VM is how it works internally. And essentially, as you can see here, it prioritizes the ZK friendliness or ZK optimizations over EVM compatibility to exploit the full power of a ZK centric design. So instead of everything that exists in this kind of world where we, we built the POS, we built the ZK EVM, we built all the CDK chains to be EVM compatible and adapt and, and, and allow all of the existing community to onboard easily to those uh, chains. What if we went a different pathway and optimize completely for zero knowledge proofs? So this Maiden is actually going to coexist alongside all of the stuff we've talked about so far. Right now it's pre-testnet phase. So testnet is coming out uh, very soon, I believe, some alpha there, but this is kind of a separate pathway, right? So everything we've talked about is EVM. What if we went a separate way where we use all of this awesome ZK tech in a different way to say, okay, what if you wanna create a really optimized application for a specific use case that you don't want to kind of make generally available for all EVM users, you want it to be a specific application that utilizes zero knowledge proofs to their full effectiveness. Let's actually approach this with a different VM called Maiden VM. So for this video, I'm not gonna to dive too deep into what Maiden is and how it works because I haven't had the chance to play around with this myself yet. I'll be doing that and making videos and educational content over the next couple of months. So if you wanna see more detail, remember to stay tuned and subscribe to the channel as well if you're interested in those follow-up videos. I wanna switch gears back to talking about different kinds of proofs and the different kinds of technology that is powering both the ZK EVM side of things, as well as things like Maiden, right? Because these teams are all working on zero knowledge proofs and all benefiting from the kind of work that's happening in-house at Polygon. In this other video on my channel, I talk about the different kinds of zero knowledge EVMs or the ZK EVMs and how they're categorized by Vitalik into different types based on how equivalent they are to Ethereum. 
The reason this is relevant to this video is because Polygon's actually working on two different types of provers. So there's a type one prover, which means it's kind of essentially doing everything as Ethereum expects, right? So everything is equivalent to Ethereum. Everything behaves the same as Ethereum. Everything that Ethereum does is being proved by the type one prover. And then they're also working on the type two prover. So right now Polygon ZK EVM is classified as a type three ZK EVM with a few minor differences remaining to kind of become a type two ZK EVM, which means it's EVM equivalent, but not Ethereum equivalent. I wanted to show you this because the CDK chains are going to have the option of what type of prover they're going to use to utilize for their CDK chain. I wanted to quickly touch on the ZK prover systems that are being built out of Polygon as well, as this relates to the type one, type two prover stuff that we were just talking about. So Plonky3 is a kind of more optimized ZK prover system that is going to power each of the ZK prover systems for each of the chains that we've just talked about. Importantly, Plunky3 is going to make it more realistic to run that type one ZK EVM prover more efficiently because there are aspects of Ethereum that are very computationally expensive and just not ZK friendly to actually generate proofs for. And Plunky3 is a system that is going to help create a more optimized way of generating zero knowledge proofs for Ethereum equivalent ZK EVMs. If we go back and relate this back to our diagram, ZK POS is going to utilize that type one prover while ZK EVM is going to use the type two prover and upgrade from a type three ZK EVM to a type two ZK EVM. If you have no idea what I'm talking about, I would recommend you check out that uh, other video on my channel. We linked in the description of the different types of ZK EVMs. If this doesn't make sense to you yet, each of the CDK chains will also have the choice to choose between a type one prover and a type two prover. I wanted to quickly touch on this towards the end of the video, just because there are some recent innovations that are coming out to actually make all of these ZK systems more optimized with the development of Plunky3. So that's it for this video. I wanted to kind of dump all of my knowledge that I have about Polygon 2.0 into one video that hopefully you can consume over a couple of different sittings if you need to, to really understand the different innovations that are coming out and what this Polygon 2.0 roadmap really means for you. I hope you got some value out of it. And if you did, please don't forget to hit the like button to help me out in the algorithm and subscribe to the channel if you want to see more videos like this coming soon. If you do, I hope to see you in the next one and thank you for watching.